Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you all guys are well and doing absolutely fine. If you are new on this channel and like to listen to true scary experiences of people on daily basis, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. So by not taking much time, let's just start with the stories. I want to share an unsettling experience I had recently while driving home on the highway. For reference, I'm a 30-year-old woman, and the man involved looked to be around 35 to 40 years old. It was a typical day, and I was cruising along a four-lane highway. The traffic was light, and there were no obstacles or slow-moving vehicles ahead. I found myself behind a van for several miles. Everything seemed normal. I was maintaining a safe distance and following the flow of traffic. After a while, I decided to pass the van. I signaled, checked my mirrors, and moved into the passing lane. As I began to overtake him, I noticed that I was having no trouble passing at first. But just as I was about to pull ahead completely, the driver of the van suddenly accelerated. It caught me off guard. I thought maybe he hadn't seen me or perhaps he was just absent-mindedly speeding up. I increased my speed slightly to complete the pass, but he matched it, keeping pace right beside me. Perplexed, I glanced over at him. That's when I saw him gesturing and waving at me. His motions were deliberate, pointing at himself and then at me, as if signaling for me to pull over. His facial expression wasn't angry, instead, it was almost insistent like he urgently needed my attention. Feeling uneasy, I decided to speed up and put some distance between us. I pressed the accelerator and pulled ahead. In my rearview mirror, I saw him slow down, and for a moment, I felt relieved. But then, he gave me a wave, a casual gesture, almost like a friendly hello or goodbye. It didn't make sense. Just when I thought the odd encounter was over, he sped up again. This time, he moved into the passing lane and accelerated until he was right beside me once more. He repeated the same gestures, pointing to himself and then to me, motioning as if asking me to pull over or acknowledge him in some way. He even shrugged his shoulders, as if to say, Come on, or why won't you stop? At this point, my unease turned into genuine fear. I tried to ignore him, focusing my eyes straight ahead, but he was persistent. I decided to try losing him by adjusting my speed. I sped up, hoping he'd give up, but he matched my speed. I slowed down significantly, thinking he might continue on his way, but he slowed down too. I even tapped my brakes in hopes he'd pass me, but nothing worked. Desperate, I reached for my phone and pretended to start recording him. I held it up visibly, making sure he could see that I was documenting his behavior. That seemed to do the trick. He finally accelerated, pulling ahead of me. I watched as he merged back into the right lane, putting some distance between us. However, my relief was short-lived. A few miles down the road... I noticed he was taking the same exit I usually take to get home. Panic set in. Not wanting him to follow me to my house, I made a quick decision to take a different route. I turned in the opposite direction toward a shopping center that I knew would be busy at this time of day. I pulled into the parking lot of a well-lit store, found a spot close to the entrance, and parked. My heart was racing. I sat there for about an hour occasionally scanning the area to make sure he hadn't followed me. Thankfully, there was no sign of him. The whole incident left me feeling unsettled and violated. I couldn't think of any reason why he would target me like that. There was nothing visibly wrong with my car that might prompt someone to flag me down. Sure, my vehicle has some dents and rust, nothing out of the ordinary, but nothing that would require immediate attention or justify his bizarre behavior. If he genuinely thought something was wrong with my car, a simple gesture pointing toward my tires or rolling down his window would have sufficed. 
His approach was anything but reassuring. I also considered whether I might have unintentionally upset him. But I had been driving behind him for miles without incident. I hadn't cut him off or made any aggressive maneuvers. He didn't display typical signs of road rage. No honking, no shouting, no angry gestures. Instead, his demeanor was oddly persistent, almost too friendly, which made it even more unsettling. The way he kept pointing to himself and then to me, coupled with that shrug, felt invasive. It was as if he was trying to coax me into pulling over without any legitimate reason. The entire experience was so surreal and unnerving. I managed to snap a photo of his vehicle, capturing the license plate and make of the van. I'm seriously considering reporting the incident to the police. Even if nothing comes of it, I feel it's important to document what happened in case he's done this to others or tries it again in the future. Reflecting on the situation, I'm reminded of how important it is to trust your instincts. Something about his behavior felt off from the start, and I'm glad I listened to that inner voice telling me to be cautious. It's frightening to think about what might have happened if I had pulled over or led him to my home. I'm sharing this experience not only to process what happened, but also to caution others. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, prioritize your safety. Don't hesitate to seek out populated areas or contact authorities if you feel threatened. It's always better to be safe than sorry. This happened about a year ago. I live in a safe Eastern European country where not much crime happens, but I am originally from the Middle East and I only speak the local language a little bit. Me and my girlfriend who is local and another friend of ours from England who is just a tourist, we decided to go for a picnic during the weekday to the one famous park. This park is a famous destination for picnics. But weekdays in the mornings, it was mostly empty beside the main area where people do some BBQs and some food carts are there for ice cream and snacks, etc. After we hang out in the park, we decided to go and our friend from UK saw some of the items on food carts and she was interested since it's a new culture to her and my girlfriend. And she started talk about what are these food and I was trying to find some coins since clerk is not accepting cards and I mostly pay with card. We spend about ten minutes like this. Vendor seemed a little too friendly to me. He left the back of the food cart and came to our side to talk to us with his broken English and little translation from my GF. He was talking about football with our friend from UK and politics of UK and making racist comments about its president. We bought our products, and he was still talking. Started to be touch with girls and being weird, yelling racist things about the president of UK and his race. We were kind of moving, but he did not let us end conversation. He asked our guest, where is she staying when she goes back, if she is taking a plane or a bus? And our naive and little drunk friend was answering some of these questions. At this point, I decided I take over the conversation, told the girls to start walking, and I told the guy... Thank you, man, for all the conversation and for the items. They look delicious. And I waved at him and so on, because he was still talking and walking with us about 20 to 30 meter away from his food cart. At one point, he also said goodbye and left. I checked him after 100 to 200 meter. It was the last moment I can see his cart due to curve in the walking path and the trees he was serving another person and I moved on with my life. Now that we left this main area, we have about three to four kilometers walking until we see someone else. We walked about one kilometer, came across this toilets that you put a coin and door is unlocked. I went inside, both girls were outside, and when I was washing my hands, I heard girls screaming, 
He is coming back, OMG, what he wants. And suddenly they are like, oh no. I rushed outside to see same vendor grabbed both of the girls from their arms and pulling them towards toilet and telling them something I don't understand. Short info. This is a guy about 50 to 60 year old, relatively weak and small. I went outside and rushed the dude to take him down, but he walked away and getting his hands up like to show his surrender or that he is friendly, I stopped as well, got the girls behind me, told them to walk fast, and telling the guy he needs to leave. My girlfriend told me he was telling them to go inside the toilet all of us so we won't pay multiple times. So we started walking away, girls walking in front of me, and the guy is behind us, and he was following us still trying to look friendly and asking my friend if she is taking plane. Meanwhile, he is making a, with his arm, a plane gesture and saying, Plane UK today tomorrow? I just wanted to make sure so we walked another way to confirm he is following us, so I can legitimize the use of force towards an old guy, if it comes to that. So we change our route, and he continued to follow us, and at this point, I took a look around and called an Uber to the nearest direction. Meanwhile, we were walking fast with him following us to Uber. We approached to a couple of buildings under construction, and we were two minutes away from Uber, which already arrived, and this guy suddenly rushed toward us while swearing, and his hands are showing the girls mumbling some stuff. I grabbed his arm and pushed him away. He almost fell, but recovered and he went back to distance again, but continued to follow us. He said some things none one understood, and his answer my girlfriend told to him, go back to your cart, sir. You left it unattended, and so on. This guy unlock his rage at this point. He is angry, telling us there are no thieves in this country. There are thieves in UK and wherever you came from. At this point, my adrenaline hit the peak, because I saw this guy was in rage. And this continued about 30 seconds, and suddenly, he waves his hands and runs towards this building's under construction. I was in total survival mode. I literally did not care to look where did he wave or who did he wave for. I shouted run, and we run to the Uber. I turn back to see the guy for a half second. He was also running, but not towards us, towards constructions, where he waved. But I did not look again to his destination. I only saw him but it was visible that running was a challenge for him, physically. He had a difficult time, and I continue running. We took the Uber and went home. My girlfriend told me we don't need to go to the police since they won't do anything, and it would take our time when we have a guest. None of us managed to take a look at where did he wave. None of us know what the fuck happened until today. I'd like to talk about a kid I'll refer to as Cal. So Cal in 6th grade, you see, had a crush on a girl I'll refer to as V. That sounds harmless at first, and it was until one day V and an acquaintance of mine I'll call Luke were on a walk during recess. Luke and V are talking, but then Luke looks to his side and sees someone standing there with a blank expression on his face. It was Cal. Not hiding behind a tree or anything, just staring dead set at V in particular out in the open. As you'd expect, this freaked the two out, and Luke told Cal to go away, which he listened to. But even after it was made clear that V wasn't interested, since he quite literally just creepily watched her, he continued to pretty much stalk V the entire school year. Thankfully, this stopped in seventh grade. But the story doesn't end there, though. In seventh grade, Cal was much more chill and stayed to himself most of the time. He even showed me memes in his phone from time to time, from his Discord server of all places. The server was full of a lot of strange-looking accounts, and Cal got annoyed almost mad when I asked about them. But since I only was around him when he showed me memes, I never paid attention to what else he did. Now he started staring strangely at a friend, if mine I'll call Gia particularly at a, let's just say a rather suggestive area. 
Then when she was playing tag with some other students, Cal invited himself in it, but what he did made me sick. Now Cal's a pretty slow runner, but he somehow caught up to Gia, and when he tagged her, he tagged her in one of her chest area. Although Gia brushed it off as an accident, he did it in the same spot a second time. Now it was crystal clear what his intentions were. It truly makes me sick that he saw her playing tag as an opportunity to literally sexually harass her. And Cal never got physical like that with V, however I suspect that he hates Gia. As one day, Gia did something that made Cal really mad. I think she knocked his lunch off a table on accident or something like that. At least that's what Gia told me. And temporarily he told Gia to go away whenever she got even remotely close to him. And when she did, Cal started hissing at her, almost like a cat. It was really weird, but this stopped in just a few weeks or so. Fortunately, though, that's all he's done, which I'm glad for, though I still see him around, of course, and he only hangs out in three places. Those being a bench he sits at all recess, the table he sits alone at during lunch, and he goes into the bathroom for up to 15 minutes. I have no idea what he could possibly be doing in there for that long, and I don't think I want to know. I can't believe I used to hang out with this kid. It's truly disturbing that someone who seems so humble can be a completely different person without your knowledge. I'm just glad he stays out to himself now and knows better than to show his face around us again.